Well, good day, Space Cadets, friends, Romans, and countrymen. I'm coming to you live from uh, my home in France today. I'm in France for about a week here. I'll be speaking at a church in Lyon, France, and near Tons um, in Haute Loire, where my own home is here. Uh, it's great to be with you. Hey, in a moment, I want to share some thoughts that really changed my life as a teenager that I was just thinking and meditating on today. More about that in a brief second. Um, how's your week been? I've had a good week. Um, flew out on Monday evening. I flew into Lisbon, Portugal, which, sorry, the Portuguese, that's one of the worst airports I've ever been through. It was a really dreadful experience there, but uh, you don't need to hear about that. And eventually got into Lyon, France late on um, Tuesday evening, picked up a rental car, drove, it's about an hour 30 to my home here. Got everything up and going, heating on, all that kind of thing, and slept. So I had a lot of sleep yesterday, but I'm back in action today. And uh, hey, I appreciate your prayers as well. I'm going to actually attempt to do something in the next week I've never done before. I'm going to attempt to basically write a book in a week. And uh, more about that in the coming days, but uh, pretty intense project. But I appreciate uh, your thoughts and prayers for that endeavor. Good. Hey, as usual, if you are new to my YouTube channel, I think pretty soon we're going to hit 260,000 subscribe, 360,000 actually, which is crazy. So really appreciate you guys. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that and do share these videos. You know, every time you give it a like, uh, drop a comment, say hi, whatever, that really encourages the, the great algorithm in the sky to uh, show these videos to new people who need to hear them. So uh, Hopefully do some more videos tomorrow and Saturday in the city of Lyon. Good. Uh, what else am I going? Hey, I have a new mentoring class, a Zoom class last Wednesday of every month. Uh, there should be a sign up on my website or a link below. Completely free on Zoom. You can join wherever you're at in the world. It would be great to have you online for that. And uh, I'll just say lastly, a big thank you to all of the partners of my ministry as well. We love and appreciate you, love meeting with you. I'll be meeting with some partners tomorrow for coffee. And uh, yeah, thank you for churches you partner with us, ministries, businesses, individuals. We appreciate you. You can do that in the link below. So let me talk about something that's really changed my life as a teenager. I won't go through the whole thing, but real quick, I, I was brought up by Christian parents. And, um, you know, it's funny, they took me to, a ch to, the, to church from a very young age probably from birth, and yet they always knew it had to be the Spirit of God that calls you to Christ. They would never, my parents did me an amazing favor that I see, frankly, many friends, especially in America, not doing for their kids. My parents were clear for myself and my brothers that we were not Christians if we weren't sure we were Christian. It's like they didn't try to con us into the kingdom of God. They loved us too much. They loved us enough to not give us the impression that we were Christians when we were not Christians. Now, at a funny level, it would actually behoove some people to literally pause that and go back and listen to that phrase again. Because I see so many people who so love their kids that they mentally, well, I guess little Johnny, you know, once walked with the Lord for a day or two when he was 13. That was 30 years ago. He hasn't been near a church or Bible since, but you know, somewhere in the depths of his heart. And like, no, be honest with people. My point is I came to the Lord at 14 and I got saved. I got radically born again. I mean, I was all in, I met Jesus. I went from being like, yeah, God, not even, it wasn't like I was even atheist. I was sort of, God never even really occurred to me as a real person. It was just always in the background, like, yeah, whatever. And, um, but I, I met Jesus in a Billy Graham crusade in 1984. Started walking with God, passionate about God, all of those things. Um, here's what I'm trying to get to. I was part of a really great church, a spirit-filled church. Uh, I won't mention the town because I don't mean to insult anybody when I say that it's a great church. Uh, one thing seemed to be lacking for me in that church, that we believed in the healing, but we never really saw anybody healed. And we prayed every week. And I'm not saying there wasn't anybody healed, and that could have been my perception, but, you know, I, we, I used to say people went bold in our church, they got so much prayer. You know, hands were laid, empty hands, empty heads, nothing happened, and it felt like we'd invent excuses for why God wasn't healing people. I'll never forget, in about 1985, I went to the Assemblies of God Conference, the National UK Conference in, um, in England. Um, it was in a place called Minehead in, uh, I believe it was in Devon, in the south of England. And for the first time in my life, I saw 
people healed. I mean, really dramatically healed. I saw, I, I appreciate there are some challenges with this guy, but um, I saw, some of you have heard of uh, Brian Houston. I saw his father minister there. And, uh, you know, sort of like a couple of people get out of wheelchairs and run. <laughs> Wonderful guy from uh, Africa who's gone to be with the Lord. Now Benson Idahosa preached there. Wonderful man, I kind of would at first encounter with Word of Faith teaching called Terry Law from uh, Tulsa. Uh, ministered there and just powerful healings took place and it's it's like I knew this was true I knew God's word was true I knew I'd seen it demonstrated through others but why wasn't it happening in my church and I wasn't being critical why wasn't it happening in my life that was more my question and uh, when I was about 16 maybe 17 I went to see the senior pastor of my church and I you know booked an appointment it was a larger church in a UK context and especially for the 80s and you know went in made an appointment with the pastor got to see him and he sat me down and he was a lovely man of God probably in his late 70s at the time and he said Graham what can I do for you and I said pastor I have a question and he said yeah I said why is it nobody ever gets healed when you pray for them now my question came out wrong because it wasn't actually a critique and at first, this guy got a little bit flustered and annoyed with me and talked about, you know, submit yourself to those who have authority over your soul. And, you know, it's okay. I, I understood that. And then I think he actually caught my heart that I wasn't trying to be critical. I was trying to learn. I was trying to understand. And this lovely man of God came from his big power desk and then sat down on the, the settee, the sofa next to me, put his arm around me and said, Graham, I don't know. He said, I don't know. But he said, Graham... There's something I love in you, you're asking the question. And he said, somewhere along the journey of my life, you know, I became okay with the status quo, with the way things were. And he looked at me and he said, I'm not sure I know. But he, he, he poked his big bony finger in my chest and he said, never stop asking questions. He said, never, never need an answer so badly that you begin to believe a lie. He said, never, something like, never require an answer so badly that a lie or an explanation will satisfy. And he said to me something, you know, quoted Jesus in Matthew, Mark, excuse me, seven, everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. And I went out of there, not with an answer, but in a way with a roadmap to get an answer. And I began seeking the Lord straight after that experience. And, um, I either probably the first life-changing encounter, obviously getting born again, getting baptized in the Spirit, but after I, went, I began fasting, and after about five or six days, God suddenly, I don't want to say I heard a voice, because I didn't, but suddenly God spoke to me in my heart and revealed something to me which is just as real today as it's ever been in any part of my life. It's absolutely glorious. And, and the Lord gave me the key, and it's still the key. This, I will see people heal this week because of this key. It's really that simple. And he gave me the key. He basically said the answer is the Bible. The answer is the Word of God. Now, this is a French Bible, but anyone will do. And on that day, the Lord simply showed me, it's like I saw this in an instant, and I can unpack it over days, weeks, months, or years. But he, he said, I and my Word are one. Jesus is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It's like he said, Jesus is the Word. The Bible is the Word. And he suddenly, it's like I suddenly saw the Lord challenge me and said, imagine if Jesus walked into your church on a Sunday morning and said, I'm now going to pray for the sick. Would anybody doubt they'd be healed? Nobody would doubt if Jesus was there. If Jesus was there, we knew he'd do what he did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it's like I suddenly realized, no, we put the Bible on a lower level to Jesus. Imagine suddenly if God <clears throat> came down from his throne, came into your room, into my room right now in uh, chambon sur lignon France, and spoke to me. How much power would God's word have? I suddenly saw that day this book, this word, not the paper, the ink, the cover, the little ribbons some have, that's a, that's a support system. But this is, you have the words of eternal life. God is his word. When I speak God's word, it's like God speaking his word. Not because it's me, but because of the word. There's power in the word of God. The very life and essence of God is in his word. Jesus said, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. 
And that day, my whole life got changed. That day, I began realizing I can speak God's words to bodies. The same thing will happen when Jesus speaks. The power is not in the man. The power is in the word. God confirms his word with signs following Selah. Boom. Guys, if you can embed that truth in your heart, it will utterly change and transform your life. I really know that in Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for watching. Again, if you do hit that subscribe button, check out the links below. And uh, drop me a line. Si vous êtes à Lyon ou uh, Haute-Loire, uh, je me reviens me voir un café avec uh, vous. Boom. And I uh, hope to see you soon in the plan of God. Bye for now.